Hello, and welcome to episode two of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra, and this review lesson is on chapter two, Measurements and Calculations. Now, to start off, I'm just going to rapid-fire off some words and definitions at you that you might not remember at this point in time and need a quick refresher on. First off, we have hypothesis, which is a testable statement. Theory, which is a broad explanation of a phenomena. Model, which is designed to show the exact working of things. Another thing. Counting gives you an exact number. Measuring, on the other hand, gives you an inexact quantity. We'll talk about those in a second, but quickly we have to go over accuracy versus precision. Now what's the difference? Accuracy is the closeness to the correct or accepted value. Precision is the closeness of values together, getting the same answer. Now in order to demonstrate this, let's look at this really badly drawn target that I have. If you're accurate, or correct, but not precise, that means you could have three arrows that are far from each other, but technically correct. If you are precise, but not accurate, you could have three values right here, right next to each other, out on the outer rim, where they're close to each other, but they're not technically correct. Where you want to be is accurate and precise, which means you would have three right here, right next to each other, right on the center. They are accurate, they are close together. You are accurate and precise, and that is the best kind of answer. Now, the other thing to quickly talk about is percentage error. Obviously, you're not going to be accurate and precise 100% of the time. So in order to calculate how far away you were from the right value, you need to know this equation. You have your experimental value that you calculate while doing your experiment, minus the accepted or correct value that maybe your teacher gives you out of the book or whatever happens, divided by the accepted value times 100%. This will give you your percentage error. Now, if your value is negative, that means that your experimental value was too low. If you have a positive value, that means that you're accepted that your value experimentally was too high. Now, importantly, as we were talking about, measurements do not equal quantities. They represent them. A quantity is something that has magnitude, size, or amount. Now, as far as quantity goes, we have five very important SI base units. There are a total of seven, but you only need to know five of them. We're going to look at this right here. The quantity, with its abbreviation. The unit name, with its abbreviation. And I'll talk out loud about its defined standard. Now, for quantities, we have mass, that is a lowercase m. Length, which is a cursive L, or an italicized L. Time, which is a lowercase t. Temperature, which is a capital T, and amount of substance, which is abbreviated as an N. Now, the other two are electric current and luminous intensity, but we did not really talk about those in class, and you don't need to worry about them. Now, the unit of these quantities, the measurement for mass, will be in kilograms, which is kg. Length will be in meters, which is lowercase m. Since mass is a quantity and meter is a unit, it doesn't matter they have the same abbreviation because they will not be coinciding with each other in the same part of the same equation. Time is the second, which is abbreviated as an S here. Temperature is in the Kelvin, which is abbreviated as K. Not degrees K, just K. And the amount of substance is the mole, which is abbreviated M-O-L. Now the defined standard for each of these is just basically where the unit comes from. For mass, it is the international prototype of the kilogram. It has been internationally agreed upon that this certain value of weight is one kilogram. As far as length goes, it is the length of the pass traveled by light in a vacuum during the time interval of 1,299,729,458 of a second. Time the second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of radiation. The Kelvin is 1,273.15 of a thermodynamic temperature of water's triple point, and the mole is a system which contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in 0.012 kilograms of carbon-12. You do not have to memorize those, that's why I didn't write them down, but these are the important ones that you will need to know no matter the situation. 
Now, I know what you're probably thinking. What about some other values that maybe not aren't measured in just seconds or just meters? Those are called derived units. Now, those are things that you will also need to memorize that are things like area, which is in the square meter, which is abbreviated like this, volume, which is in the cubic meter, density, which is kilograms per cubic meter, which you abbreviate like this. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be cubic. Um, pressure, which is the Pascal, which is actually kilograms per meter second squared. And then energy, which is measured in the joule, which you abbreviate like this, the Pascal you abbreviate here. But the joule is actually kilogram meter squared over second squared. Now, as far as other units go, the liter is metric, but it is not an SI unit. It is equal to 0 0.001 cubic meters. These are all other things you will have to memorize or at least be aware of when taking tests. They will not be given to you. So in order to get from other values other than the meter, like the centimeter or the milliliter, you need to know conversion factors. A conversion factor is a ratio that equals one in order to change the units. The unit to be cancelled goes on the bottom in the denominator and are exact by definition, with a couple of exceptions. Now a couple of ones you will need to memorize are one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, one liter is equal to 1.06 quarts. And one pound, with the weirdest abbreviation ever, is 454 grams. These are also things you will need to memorize, but when you need to write them in equation, if you have, for example, say, three milliliters, you'll have one cubic centimeter over one milliliter. These values will cancel out, so that way you'll be left with three cubic centimeters which is how you change units from milliliters to centimeters or any other one that you would be possibly using. Now, what we're going to talk about next is going to take a little while because there are nine prefixes for different types of measurements that you need to know. You have the prefix, abbreviation, and then the exponential factor, which is what it means. The prefixes you need to know are tera, giga, mega, Kilo, centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. So there are nine of them. They're abbreviated like this. Terra is a T, giga is a capital G, mega is a capital M, kilo is a capital K, centi is a lowercase c, milli is the lowercase m, micro is this value called my. It's a Greek letter, but it's basically just a U with a little thing hanging off the front. Nano is a lowercase n, and pico is a p. These are important to know, and they are case sensitive. Now, the exponential factor, this just tells you how many of these there are in a normal unit. So if it's like a teragram, there are 10 to the 12 grams in one teragram. Giga is 10 to the ninth. Mega, 10 to the sixth. Kilo, 10 to the third. Centi, 10 to the negative two. Milli, 10 to the negative three. Micro, 10 to the negative 6. Nano, 10 to the negative 9. And then Pico, 10 to the negative 12. You will have to memorize these values. I know you might already have if you're watching this for review, but you need to know these. They are very important for you to be able to finish and solve certain equations. And now for everybody's favorite lesson, sig figs. Significant figures are basically all digits that are known with certainty, plus one that is an estimate or is uncertain. Now, there are some specific rules that are very important to know when dealing with sig figs. All non-zeros are significant no matter where they are. So, for example, if this is your value, 2.34 liters, you have three sig figs. Zeros are significant circumstantially. They are significant in two cases. When they're between two non-zeros, like, for example, in 40.34 grams, you have four sig figs. Or, if they're at the end of a number with a decimal point. So for example, in just, let's go with this number right here, 
you would still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven sig figs. They, however, are not um, significant when they are to the left of non-zeros with decimals. For example, if you've got a really big number like this, you only have two sig figs. These are the only two that matter. Or if they are to the right of non-zeros without a decimal. So 12 million, you still only have two sig figs. They are different in multiplication and division than they are in addition and subtraction. Which means, in multiplication and division, you can use no more sig figs than in the measurement with the fewest number of sig figs. For example, if you're doing this density equation of 3.051 grams divided by 8.47 milliliters, three sig figs, smallest number because this one has four, even if you come out with this value over here, you can only use three sig figs, which means your final value that you should put on your test is 0.360 grams per milliliter. However, that is only in multiplication and division. In addition and subtraction, it's different. You can go out to the same decimal as the least certain value. So for example, if you have 12.03 grams plus 6.352 grams plus 4, 5, with a decimal place, grams, you can only go out to this value here because that's the least certain in this equation. So even when you do come up with this correct value for your addition, you can only report it to two sig figs. Make sense? Now just to close this out with a quick little review on scientific notation. For scientific notation, you must list all significant numbers. So for example, this is just um, an estimate. This number would be 648.3, abbreviated in scientific notation as 6.483 times 10 to the second. The reason this is is because the first value has to be between 1 and 9. It can't be 10 point whatever because that's not correct scientific notation. Now you can use regular notation up to the hundredths place, up to 9,999, but everything else must be reported in scientific notation for it to count. Now for all of these, for sig figs for scientific notation, regular rounding rules apply. If it's greater than or equal to 5, you round up. If it's less than 5, you need to round down. Now I know this one was a bit rapid fire, but there's a lot of equations and a lot of numbers to go through for these, and I wanted to put them all into one video. But that should conclude episode 2 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments section below, and be sure to follow the in-video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on chemistry review. I do hope this helps you guys, and I hope you all have a great day.